My name is Jazz Bavadra. I'm a full-time MBA student at the Smith School of Business at Queen's University. I work in corporate communications, um, primarily public relations, media relations, crisis communications, issues management. And I find that the world of corporate communications, it's kind of a two-sided coin between the reactive public relations and the proactive marketing, advertising, sales. And I found that I was really, really good at one of those two things, but I didn't know a ton about the other. And so I felt that, that the MBA would kind of help me fill the gap between getting some education on the marketing side of things so that once I graduate, I'm much more of a, a well-rounded communicator. I'd like to stay in corporate communications, but, but kind of evolve the industry a little bit at a very much so a fine point level. So Corpcom isn't just public relations and marketing isn't just marketing. Communications is both of those things. So I'd like to step back into corporate communication, but when I say that, I do very much so mean PR and, and marketing together. I wanted to get out of British Columbia, uh, and obviously the Smith School of Business is very much so a top MBA school in the country. Um, the big thing for me is I did get into multiple schools, which was quite flattering. Um, a really smart person once told me a long time ago, the way that they treat you in the interview process is going to be really indicative of how they treat you once you start working there. And the the application, the recruitment team at, at Smith was incredible. Um, they, they just provided by far the best application and, and recruitment experience. And, and it came down to it. Um, when it came down to making my decision, it was a clear cut winner for me. It was, it was how I was treated. All of the schools that accepted me had one thing in common and they wanted to get to know me beyond my resume. And that was part of the application process before I even got to the interview. And so part of the application process really got me thinking about, about wins, right? We've all got wins. We've all got things that we're really, really proud of. But for some reason, we don't, we don't talk about them very much. We, we believe that we believe that they're just not a big deal, um, that other people won't care about them. So we just kind of ignore them and, and we don't talk about them. And, and eventually we start to forget about them. But all the schools that accepted me wanted to know about those wins. So for example, and, and, you know, for example, I, I did martial arts for a number of years and, and I got a black belt something I never talk about, but it was a real conversation piece for my application process because they wanted to know about the things that I had learned. Um, they wanted to, to talk about why I stuck to it. And so I guess what I'm saying is for anyone looking to apply for an MBA program, think back to all those wins. Uh, think back to, to what made you who you are. And just because it wasn't important to other people, you know how hard you had to work to achieve those wins. And they're things that you should be incredibly proud of. So don't forget about them. Think back to them, highlight them in your application process because they helped make you who you are. And they're a big reason why you're taking a big step to do an MBA. So all the schools that accepted me wanted to talk about them. So whether or not you're thinking about applying, um, hopefully you can think back to some of those wins that you don't really talk about. and. And my bet is that you have a lot of reasons to be really proud of yourself. Absolutely. And I think that's the real benefit, benefit of the team-based working environment at Smith is you do have a very diverse team that you're working with for six months and you've got an accountant, you've got, you know, a finance person, you've got an engineer, myself as a communicator. Um, those teams are really, really diverse. So if there's ever something that you're not good at, there's someone else on the team who is good at that thing and, and they're more than happy to help out. So that's been a real advantage for the team-based environment is for me to have support on, on some of the subject areas that really just don't come naturally to me. This was one of the things that drew me to Smith was uh, the team-based learning environment. So there's a cohort of 80, but you're broken up into teams of seven and you're working with that team of seven for the first six months for the core component of the program. Um, and like we alluded to, very much so a diverse team environment. Uh, a lot of your projects are team-based, so they are much larger projects and you do have to work in a team together. 
And the idea is that it mimics a real world scenario. In the real world, you're always working as a team. So why not learn the MBA, learn your master's education as part of a team. And within that, learn how to work within a team. If I do have to send some shout outs, major shout out to, uh, to Matt Reeser, who is the communications professor. Um, as someone who works in corporate communication, I still learned a lot in that course and uh, learned about a couple of blind spots that I might have had as a presenter, um, which is definitely going to help me out in the industry as I get into it. Um, shout out to Len Anderson as well, who is the accounting professor. He took a subject that was very much so foreign to me um, at a master's level, no less, and, and really broke it down into bite-sized pieces. and so that people like me were definitely able to keep up. Um, so yeah, I, I, I guess those would kind of be three three subjects or three, two out of three professors that, that I could send some shout outs to off the top of my head, but um, it's hard to just pick one. Everyone's been really, really great. I think the biggest takeaway is I used to be a spokesperson for my last organization. So uh, one of the big things about being a spokesperson is you know, you, you understand the subject, you understand your material, but at some point you've got to go live uh, and you've got to kind of deal with that Q&A that comes with the media interview. And I think this MBA program has done a really good job supporting that skill set so that I don't I don't lose it for a year. Um, a big part of that team based work environment is presenting as part of a team. So you still have to know the entire subject even though you're presenting on one sliver of it, because you can receive Q&A from anywhere on, on any part of it. So that ability to kind of stay on the top of your feet, um, respond to curveball questions that are coming from, from different people. Um, that's something that, that, that I'm getting support with. And another big part is, is presenting in front of a crowd. I think it's allowed me to connect with a lot more people uh, within the cohort in, in ways that I wouldn't, might not have otherwise as well. I think uh, a big part of the program is is beyond academics. You want to get involved in clubs. You want to get involved in in things that really interest you. Um, and so, for me, when you're when you're in a position as part of a team where you're supporting the entire cohort, you get to really communicate with people on an individual level, learn about the things that are on their mind. Uh, and how you might be able to support them as a student council body. Um, so it's definitely enhanced my experience in allowing me to build those interpersonal relationships with everyone in the cohort uh, in ways that I might not have gotten to otherwise. This is my only one. I, between the student council and, and a full-time MBA program, I'm trying to keep myself pretty busy. And I think once I when I started this program, one of the big pieces of advice that people gave me was prioritize the things that are important to you and make sure you're, you're hitting your non-negotiables. And for me, I wanted to get involved. I wanted to focus on my education. I, I wanted to kind of focus on my teamwork. I wanted to get my workouts in as well. Uh, and I wanted to make sure I'm carving out time for that physical activity that's really important to me. Um, and, and to kind of adequately carve out the time for all four things, I, I had to kind of sacrifice getting involved in, in another club or two. Um, so I definitely still go to events and, and speaker sessions and, and other activities as they come up. But in terms of taking a leadership role in some of those clubs, I, I've, I've stepped back. I'd like to do a lot more marketing in my next role, and I definitely like to step into a managerial role. I believe I'm ready for that. Um, I'd like to try something in the private sector. I've got a, I've got some public sector experience. I've got some nonprofit experience. I, I was a board member with the ALS Society of British Columbia for, for a few terms and had to step back to pursue the MBA. So I definitely want to get re-involved um, with the ALS Society and I'd like to get involved with other neurological diseases as well. Um, but in terms of work, I was really hoping the MBA journey would be, or the MBA would be a transition uh, into getting those opportunities to try new things, um, very much so specifically more marketing and in the public, in the private sector. My parents always taught me that you never forget where you come from. And I remember when I first graduated, I was struggling to find that first job getting out of graduation. Uh, and I started volunteering with the ALS Society. Um, we had some, some connections there. The ice bucket challenge was definitely a big part of uh, 
of bringing ALS uh, or kind of raising the awareness in my in my mind started to get involved um, they tapped me in to kind of help coordinate a walk to end ALS in, in Surrey, Surrey British Columbia and that was my first foray into into public relations and communication and my first foray into media relations I was kind of a spokesperson for that walk and that experience helped help me land my first job at a graduation so I remember when I started to kind of get my career going uh, it wouldn't have happened without my time at the ALS Society of BC and I always wanted to get back so uh, finally kind of when I when I was at my last job and I was a bit more settled um, wanted to go back and, and kind of help help support the society they're doing incredible work um, they're working on uh, a seminal initiative to bring an ALS research and clinical trials program to British Columbia, uh, which is absolutely phenomenal. And it was it was really it was a real privilege to be a part of that. And hopefully I can get reinvolved and, and help support that all the way to all the way to its end. I guess the first thing I want to say is wherever you take your MBA, it's going to be an intense program. Uh, I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you. It's it's a lot of work. Um, it's going to push you outside of your comfort zone to the point where you're going to grow. And if you're going to be afraid of that, that's, there's probably not a fit. Um, but if you're looking for growth, if you're looking to get outside of your comfort zone, you're looking to learn new things, you're looking to meet new people, um, you're looking to build a network of like-minded individuals, uh, that's when you, that's when you got to look at a master's program. And, and if you're interested in the business side of things, that's where I would recommend the MBA for you. Thank you.